We began our comments today with the Vermont team this morning to deliver this painful news and to answer their questions. They're a dedicated, resilient group of men and women, but today was very clearly a tough day for them and for us. Financial experts may have been predicting it for years, but the employees of Energy Nuclear Vermont Yankee first learned of the plant's 2014 closure plans early Tuesday morning, with members of the Energy Administration publicly confirming the story that afternoon. Vermont Yankee will remain under the oversight of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission through the remaining operation, plant shutdown, through the fourth quarter of 2014. This was really uh, the last decision that we wanted to make, but we feel like we have thoroughly evaluated all the various scenarios and options, and unfortunately it's painfully clear that this asset is simply not uh, financially viable. With a fresh Second Circuit win in New York and a twice federally backed court-approved 20-year license extension in hand, plus a delay-plagued certificate of public good ruling retreating to the shadows, one could have easily speculated things were going Vermont Yankees' way. But Tuesday's statement from Entergy, which cited the natural gas boom's effect on energy prices as playing a key role in the decision to close up shop in Vermont a full 18 years earlier than federally mandated, has shed new light on the financial viability of the aging reactor. Setting off a week-long media storm, as news outlets, affinity groups, local business strategists, and concerned residents struggle to sift through a tsunami of thoughts and opinions. One of the country's oldest and most controversial nuclear plants has announced it will close late next year. Entergy Corporation says it will shut down the Vermont Yankee nuclear power station by the end of 2014. The company has been battling the state since 2010 when the Vermont Senate voted against having them operate for another 20 years. Governor Shumlin said his heart goes out to Yankees workers, about 40% of whom live in Vermont. When it closes, what will happen to New England states that rely on the energy it produces? Can you talk about the significance, how this was finally shut down? Reacting to that announcement today, Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin said this is the right decision for Vermont, and it's the right decision for Vermont's clean energy future. The right decision for Vermont is the right decision for Vermont's the energy future. Certainly now, um, our taxes will just skyrocket. To me, it vindicates the state talking about economic viability and reliability. And while the plant's adversaries remain stringent with their optimism, there are plenty of positive stances to match the now heavily vocalized concerns over the fate of the local economy. I think we can learn by looking at what has happened in other communities that had reactors. After the reactor shut down, Real estate values went up in the area because the reactor wasn't there anymore. We view this as an opportunity to grow jobs and economic opportunities for those that are being impacted. I think we're moving forward in a positive way into the future. We have a great delegation. We have an excellent governor. Brattleboro has one of the best small towns in the United States to live. And that's what we should be focusing on. And with another 14 months of scheduled operation at the plant and a proposed 60 years of nuclear waste safe store, the story of Vermont and its lone nuclear reactor is hardly over. For BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyd.